only an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. So Marche to Saint-Jacques will pass now. Now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. These five chefs have made it through to the quarterfinals. Now, they're battling to stay in the competition. It's really important for me to perform well today. There's no room for errors. So, you know, I've got to just give it 110% and hopefully I uh, can make it. I'm just going to prove that I'm good enough to be here and put my heart out and prove and to show that I'm good enough to go through. You go through them doors, it's, it's another world in there, you know? But I just think you've got to keep calm, concentrate on what you're doing and just, just get it right. I think the competition is getting very tough. I don't see any weak links here. I never thought that uh, I would come this, you know, so far in this competition. There's no option for me to go home today. First, they must prove to Michelle and Greg they've got what it takes with a dish of their own invention. This is pressure. This is where it gets really tough. They've got to cook for their MasterChef lives. If they can't impress us today, they are not ready for what comes next. Only the best chefs will go on to showcase their food for some of the country's toughest restaurant critics. There's far too much going on. It looks like someone's just thrown up on the plate, to be honest. It's the best thing that we've had in the dessert department today by um, a thousand miles. We have five talented chefs in front of us. With all these ingredients, we want one plate of food, a starter, a main, or a dessert. We have got artichokes, asparagus, mangoes, lamb, racks of lamb, oysters, poussin. As a chef, you can only be inspired by these wonderful ingredients. You will have one hour to cook, but we are going to give you 10 minutes to come and choose your ingredients. Up you come, choose well. I'm buzzing, man. The ingredients are amazing. I'm having a good look. There's some lovely bits here. Um, hopefully I can put it together in a nice dish. I'm having to think, um, there's so many ingredients, it's, it's making the decision right. All right, make your mind up. Got a minute to go. That's it. You've got one hour to produce exciting food. Off you go. Claire is 22 years old. She is fresh out of college, Michelle. Last time Claire cooked for me, she delivered a beautiful plate of food. Can she deliver the goods again today? I'd really like to do well in this competition, go a lot further, because it's just so exciting. It's just every day is a different challenge and it just keeps getting better and better. So what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to do roast John Dory with a pine nut risotto. What is it telling us about you? Well, I'm trying to show some skill with the prepping of my sh fish. I wasn't going to do a risotto, but I decided it shows another skill level to it. Mm -hmm. How good does your food have to be today? My food's got to be really good. It's got to be up there today, otherwise I know. You know what? I'll be going home, and I don't want that. 
Claire is presenting her roasted John Dory on top of a pine nut risotto. To me, that doesn't sound right. Johnny's a 29-year-old head chef. He has got technical ability. He was classically trained. He's an extremely knowledgeable chef. Can he translate all that knowledge and experience into beautiful food today? What dish are you cooking, Johnny? I'm going to do a Mediterranean zarzuela, so a Spanish-style fish stew with John Dory, razor clam and oysters. Do you think a fish stew is enough to get you through to the next round? I'm, I'm hoping so. With the, with, with the sauce and the fresh ingredients and the way I've done it, hopefully it'll yeah. get me through. Yeah, I do. Do you feel you've got a bit of a point to prove, Johnny? I feel like I've, I'm 29 now. It's, uh, this is my time to really, really go for it. It's a fish stew. How is that going to be presented with elegance? It's an important stage in my life. I'm not getting any younger. This is make or break, I think, for like career-wise. Glory, 27-year-old head chef in a seafood restaurant in Eastbourne. For me, she's proved she's got a palette. For me, she's proved that she's got beautiful presentation. Can she combine both of them to date? I think I need to prove that I can cook something other than fish. <laughs> I'm just so I can show them that I'm not just a seafood chef. You need to kind of stand out to be safe. Right, Laurie, what dish are you cooking for us? I'm going to do quail. With the, with the liver, and I'm going to make kind of like a nice fragrant reduction with it. Where are you at now, do you think, in your career? I'm at the stage now where I just really want to improve and learn. I think I'm just, I've reached a certain plateau now, and I'm just trying to push myself forward. Does it matter if you go out today? Yeah, it matters a lot if I go out today, yeah. I want to succeed, I want to do my best, I want to just prove myself. Liver and quail are two very different things. It's not easy to pull them together. I'll be really impressed if she does. You are halfway. Halfway. Steve is a 25-year-old sous chef in Cornwall. That is one of the best young talents I've ever seen. He is bubbling with enthusiasm, and we know he can deliver the goods. We just want to see more of that. I think we've got a lot more to offer and to show them, really. I've got a lot more to give. Hopefully, they will sort of see that in me anyway. Steve, what have you created for us? Um, I'm creating a little quail dish, uh, using the quail in a, a few different ways. Uh, I'm going to basically just took the breasts off, made it a little fast. I'm going to poach that off. There's another bird I'm going to roast off on the crown. And then I've got in here, that has got the leg, just comfy in slowly. Convince me that you can actually do justice to three different ways of cooking in an hour. Wouldn't you be better off focusing on one? No, because that wouldn't be me. You know, I'm not going to just cook one bit of quail, because we're all here. What's the point playing simple? You know, go for it and just be myself. And that's what I'm doing, you know. Steve is attempting four times more work than any other chef in the, in the quarterfinal. I'm exhausted talking about it. I don't know how he's feeling about it, but I really think it's a bit of a long shot in 60 minutes. Swami, 27-year-old sous chef, originally from India. He's had no classical training, he says. That doesn't matter today. He doesn't need it. What he needs is creativity and style. OK, Swami, what, what does this competition mean for you? It means a lot, a lot to me. I'm striving, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping, I'm, you know, sort of, I'm working every single day to uh, uh, go to that, you know, level of perfection. What are you cooking for us? I'm cooking a baked uh, John Dory with uh, sorted mushroom, shallots and uh, peas and uh, I topped it uh, oysters. Wow! Swami, why so much? This is the time I can, you know, sort of a chance for me 
show that what else I can do apart from the regular cooking. Good luck, Swami. Thank you. I believe that uh, 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 when it comes to, you know, uh, cooking, uh, I, I don't want to restrict myself. I don't go by too many set rules. Swami seems to have a lot of different things that he's trying to bring together onto one plate. I'm not sure about the identity of this dish. Last ten minutes. Three minutes, guys. Your last three minutes. Plates, plates, plates. Time is up. Stop. Sous Chef Steve has made quail three ways. Roasted, confit and barotine. Served with celeriac puree, braised shallots and asparagus with a red wine sauce and Girolle mushrooms. Beautiful presentation. The little crispy confit of leg is really nice. You've got different textures going on here three different ways of cooking the quail. You're showing off and showing off your skills, which I like. It, it's delicious. Everything is soft. Everything is flavorful. It's Moorish. Yeah, I'd, I'd take everything off the plate and then lick the plate. Yeah, feeling really good. Yeah, delighted. Good comments. Um, uh, yeah, pretty happy, really. 22-year-old Claire is serving roasted John Dory with pistachio and rocket risotto, braised shallot and braised fennel. Scruffy. We are looking for something elegant. Claire, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised because this looks very scruffy, but the taste is very good. The fish has got a beautiful colour. I, I like my fish this colour. It means you can eat the skin. The fennel is delicious, well seasoned, but the risotto is a little bit too creamy, too rich, too heavy. So, so wish that risotto wasn't there. That fish is lovely. Absolutely lovely. There is nothing wrong with that dish that tipping the risotto away wouldn't cure instantly. It's really frustrating. I was shocked that they gave me like, good feedback on the flavours. Head chef Johnny has made Spanish sarsuela fish stew with pan-fried John Dory, oysters, roasted baby potatoes, clams, fennel and asparagus. The idea of cooking a fish stew in a, in a quarter final uh, is a risky one, I believe. I think it looks really nice. I think it's delicious. You've got the tomato, the saffron, the garlic, the, the onion, uh, and you cooked your John Dory really well, well seasoned. It is good, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. That is lovely. It's rich, deep and sweet. Nice cooking, Chef. Thank you. I'm feeling really good, you know. I got the chance to do what I wanted to do there and I feel I've, I pulled it off. I'm really pleased. Seafood chef Laurie has roasted quail with liver, served with berries and bacon, with a fragrant red wine reduction. Roasted means to me 
Crispy, yeah. Crispy, colourful, yeah, especially bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks poached. I think the quail and the liver and the bacon and the fruit inside works. Just needed to get that bacon crispy on the outside. I think there are some errors on here. And the biggest error, I think, is staining all of the meat with the sauce. You've made everything the same Ribena colour. Ugh. I didn't like your presentation, but your meat is soft, and I also like that liver iron that you, that you give it. But chewing on the bacon that's not crisped up isn't right. I think I've proved to them the last three rounds that um, I have something, you know. I just need to round it off now. I just need to get, get it more accurate. 27-year-old Swami has made baked John Dory on a bed of Jerusalem artichoke puree, served with sautéed shallots, mushrooms, peas, baked tomatoes, and an orange and basil dust. There are bits and pieces on this plate as a diner that make me slightly nervous. The oysters look like they've been in a fight. And if the skin isn't crispy, I would remove it or I'd want it removed for me because I don't want to eat the soft, almost flabby skin. Hmm. Really don't like the oyster with it at all. The nicely cooked fish with the Jerusalem artichoke puree, peas, and wild mushrooms I love. The fish is well cooked. I'm finding it a little bit under seasoned. I like, however, the little kick of the dried orange and a little bit of fresh orange zest on top of there as well. The charred tomato quarters are superfluous and are bringing nothing to this dish. Not happy at all. Five very different cooks with very different cooking styles, but we only have four places. Right now, we're going to have to make a decision. So off you go. I love these days. You can see five very different cooking styles there today. I think the invention test brings out the best in chefs. It's a chance for them to really shine and express themselves, and we saw that today. Can I put my favourite forward here, young Steve? I'm just, mate, I love his food. I am falling in love with, it, with his food. That was delicious. I agree. He showed a lot of precision in his cooking. He works like a true chef and his food tasted great. There's got to be a place in the next round for that lad. The one I want to mention next is Johnny. Mm. Because I wondered, we both did, how Johnny was going to make a stew look smart. It didn't actually look smart. What it did look was completely inviting. It tasted great. Johnny may not understand how to dress food elegantly, but he does pack a punch when it comes to taste and flavour. Johnny's through. Let's talk about Claire. Although young, I think she's got flair. Her plate of food, I thought, looked a mess. But it was sound cooking. I'd like to see Claire cook for the critics. We are left with Laurie or Swami. One of those two's got to go. Laurie does have skills, but 
I don't think today she properly brought it together. I thought the, the liver with the quail was a nice idea, actually. But she didn't manage to fry or crisp the bacon around the outside, so the bacon was a little bit flabby. I agree. To think like I might not have done enough and I'm going home because of myself and my mistakes. I don't want to, just don't want to. I just want to go through again. The only good points I can say about Swami's John Dory dish was that the fish was cooked properly, the girolles and the peas were well done, and I really enjoyed the dried orange and basil on top. But the concept of that dish was wrong. It was muddled. There were far too many elements coming as, uh, and fighting each other on that plate. Uh, if I go home today, then it's an absolutely disastrous thing. Uh, that's all I can. Unfortunately, only four places in the next round. And the chef leaving us today is... Swami. Thank you. I'm hugely disappointed. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It hurts, definitely. That's all I can say. Now you are cooking your food not just for Michelle and I, but for restaurant critics. At the end of today, two of you will be leaving the competition. Off you go, guys. Do yourselves proud. The chefs have an hour and a quarter to prepare and serve a two-course critics menu, which reflects the very best of their cooking. These critics do not take prisoners. They eat for a living, and woe betide anyone who gets it wrong. Steve, I think, is a class act. I really like Steve and his style of cooking. I just hope he can turn it on again today. What two dishes are you cooking for the journalists? Uh, the two dishes I'm doing. The first dish is a duo rabbit, um, the leg and the loin. Um, for my dessert is a uh, white chocolate panna cotta with uh, um, raspberry mousse, lemon jelly and honeycomb. Ooh. What's it like, in your own words, being a chef? I just I love it. I just don't know, it's just my passion, it's my dream, it's everything. I just love being a chef. And what are the downsides of being a chef? Um, obviously, we all know the hours. Um, you know, I'm quite lucky because my my fiance works. She's my she's the head pastry chef. So, yeah. so is this dessert her recipe or yours? No, not, not at all. No, none of this is her. It's it's me. You know, there's no point coming in there being her. She's like the biggest critic in my eyes. And the feedback I got from her, was bang on. I'm pretty confident I'll get it all done in the time. Mistakes, in my opinion, should never happen. If you make mistakes and you say you've got a good chance of going home. Steve's menu sounds a delight, but there is so much work involved here. I know he pushed himself, I just hope he hasn't pushed himself too far today. Michelle, we gave him an hour and 15 minutes, not a day and a half. Johnny really knows how to capture flavour. If he does that today, that will impress the critics. I'm oh, massively determined. You know, you, you only get one chance. I've said that before, you know. If you, uh, if you mess something up in there, it's, it's it. What are you making? Uh, for today, I'm going to do a luxury fish pie with uh, cod, smoked haddock, scallop, mussel and lobster. And my dessert today is going to be a lime tart topped with an Italian-style meringue. How can you elevate this pie, fish pie, to the standards that... Uh the food critics are going to be looking for. 
hopefully I'll be able to, to pull it off today. I think it can be quite a nice dish. It's got some lovely bits going into it. And um, I just hope if I do it well and do it right, it's, I, I should, I hopefully I'll be OK and they should be happy with it. Let's see if you can reach the heights you've reached before. Is he sure, Johnny? He's going for a semi-final and he's making a fish pie. Claire's the baby of the bunch. I believe she's got natural ability. She's really going to have to pull it all out today. Claire's shown an awesome talent for her age. I just hope that the pressure of today doesn't affect her. I think I'm pushing myself a lot. I mean, I've made mis little mistakes throughout the competition, so my food's just got to be pristine, it's got to be excellent. And if it's any less than that, then I'm definitely going to be going home today. What two dishes are you cooking today? I'm doing roasted Cornish sea bass with pickled cauliflower, cucumber, elderflower and lemon puree. Lovely. And your dessert? And my dessert is lime cheesecake with chocolate sorbet. I'm going for it today. I'm focused. I've just got to keep focused. I'm nervous as anything, but I'm just going to go for it, do my best. Can you do this? Yes, definitely. You sure? I'm sure. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here and I'm focused and I just want to do my best. Ah. Good. Look, we're going to leave you. Thank you. Whoa, Claire is really going for it. Oh, my word. I, ne I didn't realise a girl had that much ambition. She seriously wants this competition. If she gets it right, it will blow the critics' minds. I've seen Laurie do beautiful presentation. I've also tasted some heavenly food from her. Today, she has to bring both of those things together. I think Laurie has got so much promise, but we really need to see her push herself. I think they're expecting more from us. They're expecting more accuracy, more skill, um, more invention. And I don't want this challenge to send me home and I never got to reach my full potential in the competition. Laurie, what are your two dishes? I'm doing um, salmon ballotine with pan-fried scallops, tiger prawns and a clam tartare. Dessert is a white chocolate bavoir with vodka soaked raspberries. Presentation in these two dishes is everything. I've got an idea in my head what I'm going to do, um, but I'm definitely aware of the fact that that is something I need to work on today. Vitally important today. Timings, Laurie? What could go wrong? Uh, quite a lot, actually. I mean, I've got a lot I have to do, but yeah, I need to get, get moving. So much work. Can she deliver the food on time with beautiful presentation? You've got 15 minutes now. These three iconic food critics have tasted hundreds of dishes on MasterChef. They have seen it all and can spot talent a mile away. What I'm expecting to see and what I'm hoping to see are possibly two different things. I don't see the point of cutting them slack. I mean, that's, I'm here to you know, judge a plate of food honestly. What we're hoping for is, I think, something which really sort of shows off their skill um, and, and something which would really excite us as, as, as critics. What I don't want to see today is are dishes which cross the line between having that original little twist and being novel just for the sake of novelty. We've put the chefs here in this quarter-final. It's up to them now to deliver. And it better be good. They have got to satisfy you, I, and some very, very harsh critics. Steve, look at the state of this. You've got seven minutes before you serve the critics. You going to be all right? What, plate you didn't finish? Yeah. Probably not, no. I'm doing it. I'm just doing it at speed, you know, I'm not compromising anything. 
and going and going at it full song. If I give you ten minutes, you're gonna get it out. Yeah. That's gonna make you five minutes over. All right. So first up is Steve. He's got a main course of rabbit, roasted loin, ballantine of leg, carrot puree, confit carrot, broad beans, fond of potato, and morel cream. I think with rabbit, it, it, can, it can very easily dry out. Um, so it'll be an interesting question to me as to whether it'd be moist enough. There's a lot of stages involved. I think it's a very confident chef that would serve a dish like this to um, food critics. Lovely work. That's all right. You right? Yeah. That's it. Cool. Well done. Well done. For his main, Steve has made a ballotine of rabbit on a carrot puree with roasted loin of rabbit. It's served with a fondant potato, confit carrots, broad beans, and a morel cream. There's far too much going on. It looks like someone's just thrown up on the plate, to be honest. If you're going to go for this style of Morse code presentation, lots of dots and dashes, it's got to look perfect. And mine is slightly sloppy. So the, the rabbit loin is, is not dry, but not perfectly moist. I find the fondant potato, I think it's just slightly maybe un under, undercooked. You know, I had huge expectations on the menu. When it was delivered, I was disappointed. And certainly when I've eaten it, I've, I've been disappointed. I think you're both being a bit harsh. I think there's a nice balance of flavours on this plate. Um, I think the ballotine of um, leg meat is beautifully done. There's someone here who knows how to balance flavours really well. I love this dish as a concept. Beautiful seasoning. Shame about that pom fondant. It could have done with another five minutes. Not quite cooked enough. A bit too much in an hour. Well done, Steve. Come on. You have got 15 minutes now for your dessert. So, uh, Steve's dessert is white chocolate panna cotta, raspberry mousse and honeycomb with lemon jelly. Looks good to me. Well, all individually lovely things. It'll just be completely in um, how he puts it together on, on the plate. Let's have a little butchers. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to actually set. Well, you, you, you're going to have to make a call. Give it another two or three minutes. You've got all your garnish ready. Yeah, I just need to pull it all on. He's going to have to make a decision, and I think he's got to serve it, regardless of the fact that it hasn't set properly. That's a pan of slurper. Quick, quick, quick. Motor, motor. OK, come on. That's it. Nice, clean plates. We done? Yeah. Well done. Good. Good, good, good. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it. Thank you. I apologise. Steve's dessert is a white chocolate panna cotta topped with raspberry mousse, white chocolate crumbs and honeycomb with lemon jelly. Well, I imagine what he was planning was a, an exquisite little round panna cotta rather than what we've got here, which is basically a plate of jelly and custard. You know, maybe it'll taste OK. You've seen a really basic technical error in that the, you know, the whole point of a panna cotta is it's supposed to be set, and it's not. It may not be what he intended to be in, but I think it's really delicious. Again, as with Steve's first course, I think we've got a really nice balance of flavours here. This is someone who understands how to make flavours work together. I get the feeling about Steve is that he knows what he's doing, but he's having a bit of an off day.
Ah, oh, it's a shame. I don't think he's got the look right. I think it's too many primary colours, like play school colours, uh, and it hasn't set, but it still tastes very good. Not very good. Not good at all. Dessert just didn't, just wouldn't set. I just don't know why, this wouldn't set. Johnny, you got two minutes. Thanks, Chef. Two minutes. You right, Chef? I think so. I don't want to, like, send it out mucky, you know? No, 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 that's cool. That's attention to detail that we want. Well, I don't want to be too crushing about Johnny, but surely the words luxury fish pie should only be seen in a supermarket finest range, shouldn't they? It's not something we normally see on a menu. I slightly... Sus I, I get the whiff of the amateur with the word luxury. I think that's for us to judge whether or not it's luxurious. Where's your veg? Just there. Fine. I've got it. Well done, Johnny. Bit quicker, Johnny. They're waiting. I like that. Come on, mate. Okay. No accidents. No. Um. Hmm. Johnny's fish pie contains cod, haddock, scallop, and lobster, and it's topped with nutmeg mash. He's served it with asparagus and wilted spinach. It's a little bit wet in there, Chef. Mm. He's trying to keep the fish alive. I'm not sure the critics are going to be impressed with this. I certainly not. Well, this isn't really a very inviting-looking dish, is it? The presentation of this dish is catastrophic. I mean, the contrast between this so-called luxury fish pie, which on the menu suggests an element of sophistication, and it's completely, totally unsophisticated. <laughs> well, I finally found a piece of lobster, and yes, the piece of lobster was actually overcooked and stringy. I think it's a really terrible dish. If luxury is um, too cheesy, completely gooey, totally liquid, um, then uh, that's what this is. But to be honest, this is a complete disaster. A couple of minutes to go now, Johnny. Come on. Chef. So Johnny's given us a bit of a twist on lemon meringue pie, lime meringue pie. There's nowhere to hide with this one. Um, so um, we'll see how, how good a pie he can make. We need, to, we need to crack on now, come on. OK, OK. Nearly there. That's set, that's lovely, that meringue. Beautiful, look at it. Top notch, come on, let's go. Well done, John. That does look good, mm. I must say. It's good piping, well done. Yeah, we should be serving now, Johnny, so uh, quick, quick, quick. Go so. on, don't drop them. Be careful. Nice. 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 Good lad. So John has slightly burned his meringue. But apart from that, I think this is the business. I think it's really inviting. You know, it sort of says, come on, come on, food critic, you naughty man, eat me up. And I'm quite keen to get in there. This is a decently made dish. The pastry's good. I like the lime pie. Meringue is slightly over-sweet, over but um, it's fine. Well, it's better than the fish pie, that's for sure. <laughs> that's worth getting a bigger belly for. <laughs> that's the stuff. <laughs> really nice and sweet, but it's sharp as well with lime. Mm.
that was hard, hard work, really hard. You know, that is, that's the hardest thing I've had to do yet. Laurie, you have seven minutes. Tell me how long you're going to be and what you've got to do. Seven minutes to plate up the mains? Yeah. Are you joking? No. No, 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 no. That's what you got. Seven minutes. Why? What's the, what's the problem? Um, um, then I'm very behind. Laurie's main course is ballantine of salmon, pan-seared prawns, scallops with horseradish and clam tartare. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, and if it was on a menu, I'd happily order it. I haven't done my clams yet, I haven't done my pea puree yet, so, yeah, pretty much not ready. Well, how... how give, me, give, me a, give, me a, give me an ETA. Well, how much time I need. Yeah, realistically. Uh, I can do it in 17. Whoa, 10 minutes over? No-one's 10 minutes over. Yeah, you, you've got your work cut out. Yeah, you've got your timings... You've got your timings well off there, Laurie, haven't you? Laurie, how are we looking? Um, looking okay, sir. The, the, food, the food's due out now. Come on, Laurie, push yourself. Come on. Come on! Laurie, you are seven minutes over. I would recommend that you do say sorry when you go in there, yeah? Yes, Chef, definitely. Going? Are we going? Are we going? Um. Oh, a little bit messy. Well done. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry, it's a little bit late. There you go. Thank you. For her main course, Laurie has made ballotine of salmon stuffed with asparagus, served with pan-seared prawns, scallops with horseradish and clam tartare. This is a good-looking main course, isn't it? This to me, is the most successful dish we've seen so far, presentationally. So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty thing, and just hope it tastes as, as good as it looks. The salmon is slightly sort of dried out, uh, overcooked. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had a prawn that overcooked for a while, actually. It's more sort of Michelin tire than Michelin star. It's a real shame, I and mean, Laurie was late bringing this dish out to us, and nearly every element of it is overcooked. The clam uh, tartare, a real innovation, never had that before. This beautiful presentation, first class, top draw, we knew she could do that, but there are some very good combos going on there on that plate. The salmon for me is ever so slightly overcooked and under seasoned. I like the sound of Laurie's dessert. White chocolate bavaroise, a real test, test of her technical ability to produce that cream and, and get it to hold. You don't look too happy. No, I've made a mistake. What's up? My shortbread is undercooked. I misjudged it. I don't know why. If it's not right, don't serve it. I'll okay. tell you what, the bavoir and the boozy raspberry should be enough. OK. That chocolate looks a bit grainy. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good... Forget no, it. No. Not gonna, not worth it. That's not going to work, is it? No. OK. Not that one. <laughs> Come on, Laurie, we're over time now. Mm -hmm. Over time, over time. Let's yeah. go. Okay, go. Off you go. Sorry. Well done. Go, 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 Laurie, go. Again for the way.
For dessert, Laurie has made white chocolate bavarois with vodka-soaked raspberries. It looks good. Um, I'm, I'm excited to eat it. I didn't know what a Bavarois was. I'm still not quite sure what it is, but what it is is fantastically delicious. Uh, it's creamy, you know, the white chocolate thing. It's just fantastic. It's sort of rich. The texture is perfect. I think the raspberries, um, uh, the raspberry vodka combo is really good. Well, this is a more successful dish, I think, altogether. Vanilla vodka raspberries are inspired. And a bit of white chocolate mousse as well. Very nice combination. There should be some shortbread biscuits on this, and it didn't work. Laurie obviously ran out of time and she was flustered, and you can see that on the plate. I made a lot of mistakes. And timing was the biggest one. Claire, you now have ten minutes. Ten minutes. Right. Claire's giving us roasted Cornish sea bass, pickled cauliflower, cucumber, lemon puree and elderflower. It could be one of these things that sounds rather strange but completely blows us away. I hope that'll happen. You nutty professor. I hope you have done this before. Less of what I'm doing. Oh, stupid. Right. How are we doing, young lady? Yeah, I'm just ready to plate up now. OK, OK. You're, you're breathing like you've just done a 100-metre sprint. I just the feeling that I've never felt before. It's so hard. Slow down. I know. I just can't help it. Whoa, nice. Come on. You're all right. Go, 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 go. Right, That's it. Done, yeah. Claire has made a main course of roasted Cornish sea bass, pickled cauliflower, cucumber, lemon puree, and elderflower. Well, this really has the wow factor, doesn't it? It's an absolutely unbelievably good looking dish. It's a sort of level of presentation you would sort of see in a really, really high-end restaurant. Well, the clever old Claire. Generally speaking, the fish is perfectly cooked. I love this light little pickled cauliflower. I think it's absolutely superb. This sort of dish you would go and talk about, it is absolutely stunning. I think this shows a great understanding of balance of flavours and taste and freshness. It's difficult for me to believe that sort of work has come out of a chef so young. Claire's dessert, we've got lime and vanilla cheesecake with bitter chocolate sorbet. Well, again, it's quite a bold flavour com combination from Claire. Happy so far? Yep. Now, ready whenever you are now. Come on. Waiting on you. That's it. Come on. That's it. You're all right.
For dessert, Claire has made lime and vanilla cheesecake with bitter chocolate sorbet. Well, it looks, it looks lovely. I mean, she's, she's really got the, a great visual eye and uh, to, to go with a great palette, as far as we can tell. I think it's pretty hard to improve on something like this. Um, cheesecake is spot on. And the, the crunchiness of the biscuit is just right. And the sorbet is a real technical achievement because it's very hard to do this right uh, without making it sort of either super bitter or getting a sort of grainy texture, which is very easy to do. It's the best thing that we've had in the dessert department today by um, a thousand miles. The first, the main course was astonishing, and this is just as good. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm slightly blown away. It is sensationally good. That's very good. If you weren't here, I'd have the rest of that. Wow. The bitter chocolate sorbet is beautiful. I want the recipe. God, that is the hardest thing ever. <sighs> happy, though. Almost happy. I'm just cooked for food critics. Wow. <laughs> I love these days. I'm, I'm really impressed, really, really impressed with little Claire. What a performance from Claire. Absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy and th I'm thrilled for her. That was really, really good food and the critics loved it. I thought her sea bass dish was hitting the right notes. Claire's dessert were two masterful desserts, in my view. Cheesecake can be banal, but this was glorious. And then on the same plate, the bitter chocolate sorbet. I'm going to ask her for that recipe because that was definitely the best chocolate sorbet I have ever tasted. I think I've done myself justice today. I really do. I don't... I couldn't have done any more. Claire is going through to the semi-final. She has exceeded everybody's expectations today perhaps even her own. The most disappointing chef today was Johnny. Even if he'd have made a brilliant fish pie, I still don't know how you would have served a stylish fish pie to, to the critics. And it wasn't very good, Michelle. That's harsh, but true. I think he, he, he rallied with the, uh, with the tart, but it was uh, too little too late then for him. He kind of, he was out. I mean, that fish pie was, what was going on? It's going to be sad to see Johnny go because some of the food he's dished up has it's been very, very good. We've put Claire through. We've knocked Johnny out. Now we need to decide between Laurie or Steve. My summary of Steve is this. Undoubtedly very, very skillful cook. Didn't manage to pull it all together today because he attempted far too much in an hour and 15 minutes. It was an inspired choice of ingredients for Steve's main course. Great flavours, great taste, well seasoned. The pomme fondant was undercooked, yes. But nonetheless, that was very good. Good food. I thought Steve's dessert had a really good balance. The lemon jelly set it off really well. His panna cotta didn't set quite right, but he's got all the basic skills, all the basic knowledge. He just needs to rein back a tiny bit. It's my first bad mistake I've done in the competition so far, but it's came at the wrong time. Fingers crossed, I hope I get through and just fingers crossed, big time. I like the look of Laurie's fish dish. I really did. Uh, she was late. She did overcook her salmon. Um, that salmon also need seasoning. Um, apart from that, good, good tasting dish. I really enjoyed Laurie's dessert. I thought the combination of raspberries steeped in vodka and the fresh coulis and that lovely white chocolate bavoir was, was delicious. She wanted to serve some shortbread biscuits. They didn't work out. Uh, it is a shame that it didn't quite work as Laurie wanted. I think I deserve a place because I think 
I'm talented enough and I think I've got enough skill to be there. Enough drive, enough passion. But my performance today did not reflect that at all. This is a big decision. This is pushing one of these into the semi-final. Great food today, very good. Tough judging decision. Two of you, unfortunately, will be leaving us, but two of you will become semi-finalists. We have made a decision. And the first chef leaving us is... Johnny. I'm disappointed. Um, I can only blame myself. That's it, you know. I let myself down a little bit and, yeah, I'm pretty gutted, but, you know, life, life moves on. And the second chef leaving us is... Laurie. Well done. Well done. Finally. Well done. Thank you. My performance wasn't good enough today. They made they made the right choice. Definitely made the right choice. Well done. Brilliant. Fantastic. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't. Standing here now, I'm not sure if it's actually true that I'm in the semi finals of MasterChef. It's such an amazing feeling. Oh, speechless. Over the moon. Like, I just didn't expect it. Like, I just can't believe it. It's amazing. Like, I thought I was going home and. Yeah, it's delighted. Steve and Claire will be back for the semi-finals. I can't believe it. I didn't think I'd be standing here. He's alive. Next time, ten more chefs are back to try and impress Monica and Greg. This is it. Your first test on professional MasterChef. Competitive? Yes, very competitive. I want to win. It's a life-changing opportunity here. You know, you just got to take it. Monica, she doesn't scare me. I've worked with scarier people. Good cake. Good cake. I can't fault this dish. And I'd love to give that to Michelle.